give me presentation at the early because I'm at the airport. Sorry for this. I hope you can hear me. Um, I have the pleasure to talk to you. Of course, a lot of friends in Spain, this Valencia, beautiful city. Yeah. The weather is not so good in Germany, but better in Spain, hopefully. But now I talk about some hip robotic hip stuff that is coming up uh, in the also our region this year with the Zimmer Biomed uh, application. So the idea of robotics is not new. You see here, Da Vinci has posted this in, uh, in the 18th century, the first robot you see here. It's nothing new in our world. And we know from other subspecialties that robotic surgery and robotics and automatic became a standard of art and we are in 2024. And you see here, as in our colleagues from urology, that they are using now in prostata care robotics became the standard of care, I think, in America and probably in most countries in Europe. So robotic hips, we were learned from the knee side. It's not the question if, but only when. And if you look at the data from the United States, you will really see that robotics are jumping off, expected to take a rise of 60% in the future, while navigation doesn't play a big role anymore, as expected. Uh, in most of the Western countries for the next five to 10 years. You see here, this is a poll of the AAHKS uh, 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 the summary last year. You see 70% of all US residents have access to robotic surgery. So the future, even not for the older ones, but for the younger generation, the nowadays residents, it's very clear, they have all access to robots in orthopedic surgery, as you see here. The good, the good choice that you see, uh, even in this Australia data, at least we learned that robotics don't hurt. So the failure rate using robotics, robotics is not higher than if you, don't, if, if you don't use robotics. This is something we learned in the past, and this makes sense. Obviously, this is MAKO data from Australia because they adopted the MAKO heavily for unicompartimental uni knees and also total hips, total knees, sorry. And uh, you know, many of you have maybe heard of the ROSA knee system. The new ROSA hip system also implies into the need of robotic surgery at the hip side. It's a life planning tool. It allows you for the accuracy of the reaming and the precision, especially of the cup placement, not of the femur so far. This is only for the future because it's not, not CT based. I truly believe that every patient has a patient-specific pathology. So I believe that not all hips are the same and we have to respect the patient-specific pathology for every individual patient. We learned from previous data that even an experienced surgeon is able to put his cups in the target zone, even if he's very experienced, or sometimes only 60 to 70 percent, while the robot, as shown here in early results, has shown to be much more effective in putting the cup at the right place as we want to place it, as you see here. This is old data, but very useful, I think. And as we expect, if we come to robotic placement, the accuracy of the robot is higher because we achieve our goal every time the same. The question is more, in my eyes, what is the goal? If you look for Rosa Hip, this is a very first version. This is coming out in Europe this year, very soon. It's CRM based and it's so far only for the direct anterior approach. And you will see what are the advantages. We need no CT scan. We have zero trackers, which is new. We need new disposables. There's no bony registration, no line of sight, because we need no camera. So all I will show you in a second is based on interruptive imaging and the robot and the templating of those two imaging together. So what we do, in the placement of the cup, we verify the rima and the cup position, and the surgeon choice for Roma cup impact for Rosa cup impaction is assistance or traditional inserter. So the surgeon then chooses the stem, the leg length, and the offset, obviously. So this is, I think, one of the major advantages. We also, of course, have a planner. This is what Miriam from the company, the Biomed, will show you later today. But I truly believe that one of the most important factors for the future is a spinal pelvic tilt. And as you see here, this can be calculated automatically by the system and can be adopted to your robot. 
And again, this I don't want to show it too much, but you see how nicely you can adduct the pelvic tilt and calculate for it. And, it's see, and also in the future, we are able to track the 3D impingement. However, this is only the version for CT-based, which will be available in roughly two years. The current version is not 3D-based. You see some interoperative images. The system is in use in America, North America, since two years already. And again, coming to the, our market this year. You see the setup, no camera, no line of sight no extra uh, imaging except the CRM, as you see here, for the DAA surgeons. In America, I have to admit, most surgeons are using a CRM, which is different than in Europe, or at least in Germany, because not many German surgeons are using any CRM for total hip replacement, to be honest. However, this is how you adjust the cup, and it's impacted net, uh, manually with a hammer. However, the robot keeps the cup in place, and this is the main uh, advantage that I see, you really achieve the goal you wanted to achieve uh, with your robot. And that's the advantage over navigation because I can keep the exact position of the cup as I wanted to have it. As you've seen here, this is an interoperative image, and you see here the system automatic calcula automatically calculates the inclination and the version of your cup based on your images. However, in order to do so, you need six to seven images with the CRM during surgery. And again, once a cup is placed, the system automatically calculates you whatever you need to know, and in addition, checks your final cup position. And furthermore, of course, if you want, you can also measure the final offset and black length and uh, uh, adjustment of, of, your, of your head length, uh, head length if you want to do so. Of course, this is not done by the robot, this is just the automatically system. We know we have done some early publications. Of course, to be honest, they are all driven by the group who invented this. We have to be honest. Obviously, we were much uh, more relevantly in, within our accuracy zone using the robot than using it freehand. And again, the Levinix zone, as we call our safe zone, in this case, was more easy to reach using the robot versus freehand. So the question always comes up, is it only for younger colleagues? I don't think so. This is Larry Dorr. He's, in this case, using a striker robot when he was 70. You know he passed away. But he was always 70 when he started to use the robot in the past. So I truly believe there's a bright future for robotic hips. The current version of the Zemmer Biomed version is CRM based It's for direct anterior approach. The future will be CT-based for revisions, dysplastic hips, and so on. So there is a bright future, and I think the future really shows the trend of robotics is increasing. All major companies are involved. The US surgeons currently ahead with technology because they have a better financing. So the question really remains, not if, but when. It hits EMEA, and this is the case already for the knees, and it will do so on the hip side as well. And we all know in many markets the costs of the system, extra costs for the markers, of course, play a relevant role to establish it through our normal Western European markets. So I truly believe there's a transformation of the old hand work as only using our hands, techniques, to a systematic planning and execution. And this is my advantage of using a robot. I'm able to plan and execute very accurately and keep my plan focused and hopefully getting better results for all my patients, even in primary total hip replacement. Muchas gracias for your attention. Gracias, thank you very much for your lecture. Eh, ¿Tenéis alguna pregunta para el doctor Kenfo que, sobre la cuestión de la robótica en cadera que con el... What will happen with our new surgeons if they start doing robotic and they don't, they don't, they don't use, they are not used to traditional uh, surgery? Very, very dangerous, I believe. It's a good question. I think, personally, they have to be almost perfect in traditional handwork. Otherwise, using a robot can be dangerous. I know from some friends now in America who told me, now they have the first fellows who applied for fellowship, who told them that they have not done zero total knee without a Mako or any other robot. So there are some fellows in the States now who haven't done any knee without robots. Very interesting, <laughs> but maybe very dangerous.
Martí. Fatigue. Thank you for your speech. I have a question. More of us, we do the, uh, the hip arthroplasty in, in the cubi, lateral decubitus. How you can know the offset of the implant, for example? And what do you use for the reference of the, of the hip? Which, uh, do you understand? I know. Oh, uh, yeah, of course, uh, CC. Uh, the problem is for this version, this is the first version, because it's poorly image based and no trackers, which is new for the field. Uh, it's only for DEA and only supine for the registration process. So this is a problem. So, unfortunately, and also I'm a posterior surgeon as well, so I do most of my cases posterior. I like DEA as well. So, right now, the Zimmer and the other companies, I think, are working on the next step, which will include a, a, a lateral position, but this, the registration is much harder. That's why many companies, I think, want to use a CT scan, which, of course, I know in Spain and Germany, it's not a standard. Nobody of us always does a CT scan for a primary hip. But it's a good question, very good. Si a día de hoy las, los, la cirugía ha sido por robótica, es siempre eh, prótesis dependiente. O sea, no hay un solo robot que pueda utilizar varias prótesis. Si esto en el futuro se va a resolver o no. The question is now the, the robotics is uh, only for one type of, of hip or, or, or knee. Uh, he, um, Marco for striker, Rosa for cement. In the future, one robotics is possible to use in different uh, arthroplasties. Do you think? Sí. Sí, I think yes. I think. To be honest, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very honest. I think the robot, for somebody who operates a lot, maybe helps, but mostly in uh, severe cases, dysplastic cases for the future, or um, uh, 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 very leg length discrepancies or something like this. But mainly, I think, truly, in my experience. The robot really helps the people who are doing maybe only 50 hips or 100 hips per year because they reduce the outliers. You know what I mean? For the cup placement. And also when I look at my cups, I, I operate maybe 200 hips per year since many years. And uh, uh, also I have outliers like everybody. So I hopefully I don't have bad results, but maybe the wear is influenced by this. So hopefully I'm now able to reduce my outliers radiographically. First of all, thanks for the presentation. I have a question. Uh, I understand how you get the antiversion of the cap uh, using a X-ray intraoperatively, but uh, how do you know the position of the pelvis during the uh, surgery? Yeah. Because finally, I'm, I'm the, the antiversion <clears throat> of the cap uh, will depend on the position of the patient. So you see, yeah, of course. So this is why I told you before, we need not only one X-ray, but uh, be before, so there's one registration or two registration X-rays, and then before you insert the cup, finally, there are another two to three x-rays. That's why we need six to seven in total to make sure the pelvis didn't move during the insertion or after the insertion. So this is a limitation not using um, um, a tracker in the pelvis. But, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's agreed. We know it works. Uh, we have done so far, I think, in America, a couple thousand cases. But uh, it's a new philosophy because many people don't do x-rays in a normal setup. That's why now many people are at least forced a little bit to do it. So the system automatically lays over the images to make sure. And if the pelvis moves too much, then the, uh, the robotic system is automatically warning you. So we have two, two things. We have no trackers, which is good, but we have to be careful about the accuracy. That's why we need CRM. Hi. Uh, well, I wanted to ask uh, that uh, most of the papers that you show, uh, they compare the cap positioning uh, within the Lewinex zone, but uh, with, there are more recent papers that tell us that uh, the cap position is not always inside that zone. Um, I know. Then the thing is, uh, does the, the preparative planning, uh, not based on the CT scan, uh, could tell us that uh, is wall position or not. I mean, uh, they, are com they are comparing it only with uh, putting it inside the Levinex zone. Yeah, I agree. So maybe Levinex zone, as we know, is not the only good zone. I think what really helps, as I said, in the future, we are able, even now, in the past, I never did a lateral x-ray of my, of, my, of my spine to include the pelvic tilt. 
So now I include the pelvic tilt because we know the pelvic tilt also changes the real antiversion and inclination of your cup. So I truly believe that uh, we will have different factors in the future and the robot mm. helps us to let me know where the impingement, for instance, is occurring and telling me, okay, we have impingement in this and this position. That's why we recommend you to put the cup not in Levinex zones, but maybe more antiverge or more flat. That's a, a my ideal dream for the future. Would you, do you think that with the development of the robotics, uh, it could even tell you which kind, which approach to use? Uh, I mean, the anterior approach or the posterior approach? Could be. I, th I think uh, most surgeons probably won't change their approach because of the robot. It's probably uh, the other way. But uh, it could be because we know this location is more a problem for us, for the posterior surgeon, while it's not for the anterior surgeons. The anterior surgeons have other problems, mostly, leg length or, or things like this, so uh, uh, or fractures or something. So I, tr I think I'm not sure if, the, if this really helps because I know that some surgeons will switch because of the robot, but most surgeons will stay to the old, old technique. Muchas gracias, amigos.